Hello, I just wanted to thank you for clicking on my video, and I also wanted to let you know that not only do I create content here on Class in the Glass, but I also stream content on my Twitch channel, Mr. Revan7. I play single-player games, multiplayer games, and I also do movie reviews and cartoon reviews as well. I also want to encourage you to check out my Patreon, Class in the Glass, where I offer audio commentaries, full reactions for movies, and also the ability to submit questions for my video casts and podcasts. In the meantime, thank you for watching, and enjoy the video. Arnold Schwarzenegger is the Terminator. But now I shall not make you wait any longer, chat, for my review for the 1984 sci-fi action classic directed by James Cameron, chat, The Terminator. Now, chat, as I uh, typically ask at the beginning of every film that I review, do you a spoiler review for, and I think I know the answer to this. How many of you have seen The Terminator, chat? With Arnold Schwarzenegger. I am very curious to hear this. I myself have seen this film chat many a time. It is one of my favorite movies of all time. Saw this when I was a, a, a wee lad and was obsessive. Was scared by it initially. Uh, no, I probably have only seen it once. Dark Slayer, seen a Grubby Aries here. Uh, Trini, me. Austin, yes, what did you ask? I have, but I was very wheedle. The bear, I have. Uh, you got a lot of seen it. Also, you've been a while, I have. Starting any good to see you. Hope you're doing very well today, Star Shente. Yeah, so for most of us, we've all seen it. At least we have at least seen it once yet. I've seen this film multiple times over. Steve, many times I've lost. Come right there with you, man. Right there with you. Those ventures on Spanish a lot of kids. Well, interesting. Hmm. I would love to see what the Spanish dub for Arnold Schwarzenegger sounds like. Is it a, is it a German? Is it an Austrian man speaking Spanish? Or is it a Spanish man with an Austrian accent? I would like to know. I would like to know that, Chad. Um, new addition, good to see you. One, two, the only ones that matter. I'm right there with you, man. These are the only two films that you need to see in the in the franchise. Like three's fine, three's okay. It's not as, not nearly as good as the first two, but the rest are like blah. Five is just garbage. Five is just absolute garbage. I hate five. Genesis, awful, awful movie. Uh, but yeah, actually, no, I saw this many times as a kid. I saw this like it was funny. I like my, my first radar film I ever saw. I think I was like mm, eight or nine or maybe ten. No, maybe I was like eight or nine. It was Alien. And that is, that's a hell of a movie to see <laughs> as an eight, nine, or ten year old chat. Scared the shit out of me. Didn't get a good night's sleep for like three days, okay? But it was around that same time that I also saw The Term, which again is, is, is very violent, but not nearly as I'd say as scary as Alien. But they do share some of the, the same DNA, chat. Being a horror film and all, having a fucking entity which you just don't, a, a force of goddamn unholy nature coming for you that just can't be stopped no matter what you're gonna do. All your friends are dying and you just gotta run, chat. It's the only thing you, can, you can't hide, you just gotta run from this thing. So they share that similarity. But yeah, I grew up watching this film and the, and, and its sequel. And I, I'm, I guess I'm in the minority. I know some of you are also kind of uh, share my opinion, but I prefer the original Terminator. As I said before, uh, I, I love the 80s aesthetic. Uh, the soundtrack is amazing. That bum, 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 Like, all that is so goddamn good. Uh, the, I mean, the, 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 just the, the, like, how they present the, the, the future chat, which now looks like, like so trite, because we've seen, the people have copied uh, Terminator chat. That's how influential this movie was. And people have just been stealing uh, the, the aesthetic, the soundtrack, the way it shot for, for decades now. It was like, oh yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a Terminator. It's like, it's fine. But no, this, this, this was an incredibly impactful movie for its age, chat. And of course, Beloved. I was, reading, I was just reading uh, recently on this Wikipedia page. Apparently, it was uh, it's preserved in the National Film Registry and the Library of Congress, Jack, because it was culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. And I would agree, Chad. It absolutely is. And, and uh, now this is fun. This is interesting, Chad. This was kind of like an indie film, too, for, for its time. It had a budget of $6.4 million and a box office, Chad, of $78.3 million so made basically uh what 12 12 13 times the original budget this was a huge success and terminator 2 was even more successful than the first film chat and they're thinking oh we got a good goddamn series on our hands but now they fucking blew it with terminator rise of the machines you know i thought that film was okay not not great in any by by any means but you know okay but, yeah, I have loved this movie for years, chat. But now we must start, chat. The year is 2029, chat. It's the distant future. Well, at least in, you know, 1984, that felt like the distant future, chat. Like, 2029, that's only nine years away. That's less than a decade away from us, chat. And thank God Skynet has an attack. Unless this, is just, this whole, this fucking 2020 is just the start. 
of uh, what it will eventually happen to us in 2029. If we're on the fucking trajectory that we're on right now, I would believe it. I believe it, chat. We just need a fucking nuclear war, as the movie's saying. I mean, I'm sure there was a plague or two and stuff, and you had a fucking orange Oopa Loopa man that pressed the goddamn button. But for right now, chat, we're, we're at least we're not at least we're not the horrific future of Terminator. <laughs> we got that going for us, chat. But it is indeed the year 2029, and things aren't really going well for humanity at the moment, chat. The machines have risen, and they are slowly exterminating all humanity, chat. We got a nice little. This is the one a few times. They got like a fucking scroll. They got text appearing on the screen chat, giving you exposition. But the thing that works about this text exposition chat is that they're constantly showing you things on screen. Yeah, and I love the opening when you just see this giant tank uh, uh, robot. Just, I, I love, I love the shot chat. It's a very iconic shot. Uh, just, you see the treads just uh, uh, moving on all these human skulls, Chad, and there's cracking underneath this behemoth, and you hear the crunch of the bones, Chad, and you have that, you, you, hear, you, you see the laser fire in the background, Chad, you get that, that slight synth in the background, too, but you hear that bum, 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 it's like, God damn, Chad. Like this, that, like the, 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 the entire setup of what this world is, is now, and now he's in horrifying, of course, but it's also so goddamn cool. But we learn, chat, the machines have risen, humanity, they're at the brink of extinction, but they're finally fighting back against the machines. They've won major victory after major victory, and the goddamn machines, chat, they're like, all right, these humies, these meatbags, they, they're getting one up on us every other day. So we have to up our goddamn game. This, this war... This war will not be decided in the present. No, it'll be decided in the past. Because these goddamn machine jabroni shot, they have invented a time machine. And they're going to send back one of their people or one of their machines to kill the leader. To kill the leader of the revolution that, that originally r r rose against chat, the Terminators. Ah, but humanity's not going to live that down because they too have sent one of their best soldiers, one of their best warriors to go after that Terminator chat to protect a very important individual. And so that they will have victory in the future, but they must save the past to have that chat. And so now... After all of this tax, this wonderful opening uh, uh, sequence chat, it's so goddamn ba 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 ba. We cut to a garbage man, and he's picking up garbage chat, and he's got ADR on his voice because, you know, because his lip sync does not match up with the dialogue he's given because he's a bad actor. But that's okay. It's okay, chat, because all you need is his reactions to what's actually happening. So he's picking up this trash chat, and a fucking storm appears overhead. And we see all these this lightning coming from right to his left. He looks out, and all this wind is circling around. And he's going, what the fuck? He's freaking out, chat. Dark of the puppies, thank you. Taking our jobs wasn't punishment enough for Sky. No, nope, they're like, we got to kill you too. <laughs> we need to harvest your meat sack bodies. We need the nutrients and the sustenance. Thank you very much. And this guy freaks out. He gets out of his car, chat, and he waddles away. He waddles as fast as his little chublet legs can take him, chat. And then we see what has arrived. And it is literally... The perfect human being of all time, chat. With minor steroid abuse, I imagine. <laughs> but we see him, chat, in all of his goddamn muscular glory. A very naked, Arnold Schwarzenegger, chat, he's wearing his birthday suit. But we see a very naked, very muscular Arnold rise from the mist. And he is showing off everything he's rocking right now, chat. And he looks grim. And he's fucking confident. Because he just starts strutting, chat. And you see every curve. You see the you see the Arnold buttocks. You see both cheeks. And you can fucking... You can bounce a quarter off of that ass, chat. That's what you can do with Arnold's ass. And he goes... Uh, he looks upon the city of Los Angeles, chat. 1984. And he puts his hands on his fucking hips. He's like... I'm gonna make this city my bitch, and he does it, Chad. He absolutely does it. Oh, bro, bro, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. And Dark say thank you for the five biddies. I noticed my bro, bro being here. Good to see you. Glad you came out of the pit, my friend. We're big fans of Terminator. I remember back in the day. Good to see a swing. Just big, hawking, metallic, swinging dick, Chad. That thing, you hear that thing coming. It's like the goddamn Liberty Bell coming for you. <laughs> Except it's not. It's like, oh, freedom. No, Chad, death. That's what, that's what giant Arnold Schwarzenegger's Don represents. And now we cut to some uh, uh, street urchins chat. We cut to some delinquents and they're fucking around with some binoculars. Well, one of those delinquents chat is a, a very young Bill Paxton. 
And he is, direct, uh, he is dressed as a street talk chat, a punk, if you will, a punk kid. They all have spiked hair. They use all the gel chat. They're wearing clothes that's covered for whatever reason in chains and shit. It's a very weird aesthetic. But they're goofing off. They're fucking with each other. It's the three of them chat. And then they see fucking Arnold, big dick energy Arnold, just coming right towards him. And they go, <laughs> look at this guy. And they just start laughing. And they're like, hey, nice night for a walk, huh, man? And Arnold just responds, hey, man. Nice night for a walk. And they're like, oh, this guy's got a few screws you can't even possibly imagine. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, we're going to let's keep fucking this guy. Arnold's like, Arnold's, he's had enough of this shit. He's like, take off your clothes. Give them to me. And he's like, we ain't giving you shit. And they get their little pocket knives out, Chad, and they're about to stab Arnold. And Arnold's like, that is adorable. And he just fucking, he hits a guy so goddamn hard, Chad. He flies the wall back, impales himself on a gate. He's dead instantly. I mean, the punch literally caved in his chest, Chad. You know the breastplate right here? That was fucking gone. All that pressed into his internal organs, coughing up blood, dead. And then uh, he fucking sees Bill Peck. The best like, no! Tries to stab Arnold, Chad. Arnold puts his giant metallic Austrian fist right through, right up his ass, Chad. Right through his stomach. And all the intestines are falling out. All the insides have become outside, Chad. And Bill packs and he dies. The first in a long running series of Bill Paxton being killed by iconic monsters and uh, uh, other aliens in film chef. He's the only, I think he's the only actor to be, no, he's not the only actor chef. For a long time, people considered him to be the only actor to be killed by both a predator, a terminator, and an alien. But, ah, someone else has that role too, Chad, Lance Henriksen. He too was also killed by a terminator, predator, and alien. There you go. There They share that. They share that in common, Chad. Good for them. But the other guy, he starts fucking panicking, Chad, as you would when you watch your one friend be impaled on a fucking gate and have all of his uh, internal organs explode like a hot water balloon inside of him and watching his friend's stomach and internal organs ripped from his body and so he finally does the right decision chat and begins stripping in front of arnold it's like come on man don't kill me i'll suck your giant metal dick man and he does but he takes all his clothes off arnold he gets in this chat he doesn't have the iconic like people always associate arnold with that you know the leather jacket chat and the and the jeans but no at first he's kind of dressed like a like a like a punk kid for the most part has like this uh denim gray jacket on with a bunch of chains on it that that's what it is that's his the first he eventually gets the leather jacket later on in the movie this is the first these are the first human clothes he adopts and chad he wanders off into the night looking for somebody chad he needs to find someone but meanwhile we cut to another uh, uh part of the great city of los angeles chad the city of angels and we see a homeless man chad and he's talking who knows he's speaking gibberish but he sees some crazy shit because we see the same storm and lightning just show up in the middle of this alleyway and it explodes and we see chad a not nearly as a uh, robust or muscular individual, we see a Michael Bean chat, and he is just shaking. <laughs> he is so scared and in so much pain. He doesn't know what the hell just happened. He's vomiting everywhere. And the homeless man, he's like, oh, shit, man, you see that crazy shit? And Michael Bean goes up to this guy and starts punching him. <laughs> it's like, Michael Bean, no. Michael Bean, don't do that. And he takes his pants. And meanwhile, the police, they stop by and they're like, hey, stop taking that homeless guy's pants. First of all, chat, the police wouldn't have given a shit if he'd taken those homeless guys' pants. But they didn't like seeing uh, Mike, uh, Michael Bean's Don. That's what they didn't like. And Michael Bean, he takes off. He takes off because he doesn't want to get the pants back. And homeless man's like, get me back my pants. And uh, he never gets the pants back, chat. He goes pantsless for the rest of the film. And we file Michael Bean, chat. He's running his little sweaty ass off. And he's going every which direction that he possibly can. Uh, but uh, but one of the cops gets separated, and he's trying to call for backup chat, but ah, surprise, Michael Bean attack! He attacks him, chat, but he doesn't hurt him. He punches him, and he takes his gun away, and he starts asking all these questions. Hey, man, what year is it? What, 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 what year is it? He's like, oh, fuck, uh, what's the date? What's the date? It's like, it's fucking, you know, May 12th is a Thursday. He's like, the year! It's like 1984. He's like, I'm here. And then he runs, and he takes off, Jay. He still has the gun. And uh, then he goes into a, uh, a mall. He breaks into a mall chat. All the cops are swarming over this thing. And he's slowly taking all these clothes. Very weird fashion sense, chat. By the way, this is Los Angeles. Feels, I guess it's in the, in the fall. Maybe the winter because they say how cold it is outside. It looked fucking hot. It looked very hot in the daytime. But he grabs a, uh, a raincoat and overcoat chat. 
He gets some sneakers, Nike. They made sure, that's, how, that's, that's what paid for this movie, chat. That goddamn Nike uh, commercial in the middle of the film. When you see him, he's, and it's not like the laces, chat. It's the, it's the, what is it? The, um, the Velcro bands. He's got the Velcro bands on. It's like, ah, that's fucking cool. Got the Velcro Nike band sneaker, chat, puts those on. And he hightails it out of there, chat. But the cops are still after him, though. So he's, he's, he's trying to be as careful as possible. Eventually, he gets into a, uh, I think he gets into like a police vehicle, punches someone, takes a gun, chat. Then he takes like a shotgun and he continues to walk off into the night. What's he gonna be doing? We shall soon find out. Dark Slayer, thank you for the five minis. So Kyle Reese assaults a bum, steals his clothes, assaults a cop, steals his guns, breaks into a department store and steals more clothes. Our hero lays. I know, I know, it's like, but that's what's so great about it, chat. Because if you didn't see the marketing, you're thinking, uh, so are these guys, are these both the bad guys? But what they're doing, I guess we can, since, since Michael Bean didn't kill him. Then didn't shoot the copper like let to be okay. He, like they came under here under similar circumstances, but this guy probably is the is the good guy or one of the good guys in the film. But we just kind of don't know, and that's what works about the narrative chat. Like when we were eventually introduced to Sarah Connor, she's just like I I don't want to have anything to do with either of you. Get the fuck away from me. Which is so great. And meanwhile, chat, we cut to daytime. It's daytime now. And uh, Arnold, he is moving around. He has stolen a car. And uh, he sees a fucking phone booth with a very large man in overalls who's talking to his wife to come pick him up because his car doesn't work. And Arnold said, okay, you're done talking. And he fucking grabs this man by the beer chat and just tosses him to the curb. He's like, get the fuck out. He's like, what the fuck, man? And rips his jaw off. He's like, oh, my God. He's fucked up. And he goes, the, uh, the 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 phone book, remember phone books? Phone book chat were a thing. And he looks at the phone book chat, and he looks down the names, Connor. And he sees three Sarah Connors. And he takes that shit, gets in the car, and he starts driving, chat. That's when he starts driving. Meanwhile, we cut to a Sarah Connor, chat. A very young Lind Lindell Hamilton. She is riding her little moped in L.A. And she's late to her job, chat. She is a waitress at a family diner. She gets in there. Her friend's covering her first. She's like, don't worry. Told the boss you're running a little bit late. But he doesn't. He doesn't mind. Just got to get get my, my tables for me. Got to get like a table or two. She's like, all right, I'll, I'll do it. And she clocks in, chats what she does. And then she, uh, she starts serving the people. Meanwhile, we cut to a, a typical suburban neighborhood chat. We just see some kids to play with their toys. They're swinging on the swings, you know, they're riding their bikes. And we cut to a little blue truck. I was like, oh, someone left their blue truck in the street. And Arnold Schwarzenegger saw that blue truck and says, I fucking hate that blue truck. And he rides over that shit. <laughs> oh, no, no, not yet. I'm sorry, Joe, we gotta back up. We gotta back up. We're not over, not, we're, Arnold Schwarzenegger has not yet rode over the little bl little boy's blue truck, Chad, because now we cut, we cut to a gun store, and Arnold is requesting all of these weapons, all these firearms, from an actor that you've seen before. Oh, God, what's his name? Uh, da, 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 you know, Dick Miller, Chad. Dick Miller plays the, the, the drunk guy from Gremlins. He's been in so many other films, Chad. But good old Dick Miller, Chad. Good old Dick. He's selling uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger all these uh, advanced weapon uh, weapons, Chad. Goddamn pistol with a laser scope. Got a few assault rifles. Some uh, semi-automatic shotguns, Chad. Some Spaz 12s, if you will. I've seen those in the video games. And Arnold, Dick Miller's like, wow, you sure do know all your weapons. And Arnold's like, I need a Phasaton 4 plasma rifle. He's like, hey, boy, I can only give you what's on the walls. And he goes, okay. Okay, I'll take that one. And Dick Miller, he grabs the gun for him. And Arnold, he just starts loading all this shit. He's just starts throwing the bullets in here. He's like, now listen, uh, you're going to pay off for this today? He's like, yeah, I will pay. And he's like, okay, cool. By the way, you can't load that. You can't uh, You can't. Lo you can't do that. You can't load the gun. He's like, wrong. And he blows Dick Miller away, Chad. He blows Dick away. And he's dead. And then, Chad, that's when we cut to the suburban neighborhood. And he rolls up on that little boy's blue truck. The little boy's like, why, Arnold? He's like, I do not care. And he goes up to this house, Chad. He goes up. He sees a dog barking. He hates that fucking dog. He's like when that dog is barking. I'm Chad. The dog's just going erratic. It knows Arnold is evil. And then he goes ahead. He knocks on that door. And he waits. And we see, uh, uh, he asks. He asks. The, this, this woman uh, comes to the door, Chad. She opens. He's like, yes. He goes, are you Sarakanda? She goes, yeah, and he's like, Sarah Connor's my trigger, and he fucking busts in that door, Chad, he, knock, he knocks down the door, she's like, ah, and he pulls up his giant silver baller pistol with laser scope, Chad, and he blows her, he shoots her right in the goddamn head, keeps shooting her, Chad, and just walks out the door, why the hell is he doing this, Chad, why is he looking for Sarah Connor, we shall soon learn, and then we cut back to the diner, Chad, 
Sarah Connor, she is just being run ragged. She's got too many tables to go. People are being very demanding. The service industry is a very difficult industry to work in, Chad. I used to work in it. It's it's very hard. That's why I, that's why I tip well. Tip your servers, Chad. Tip your servers. And they're doing a good job because my it is hard. It's hard. You got to deal with all these assholes. But she's trying to help everyone's name. Everyone's asking for coffee, and she's setting these things down. I was like, I didn't order it this way. I had I had this extra side on it. And she's like, Ah, I'm sorry. I'll go back. And then chat to cap. What a little dick move. You have this little kid in an opposite like a booth that she's serving, and he walks up to her and puts just a giant like a like a uh, like like a giant scoop chat. Like a giant scoop size scoop of ice cream right into her uh, pocket of her uh, of her work attire, and she's just looking at this kid like, "What the fuck?" He's like, "Ha!" Ah! I was like, "I hope that kid gets it. I hope he gets Terminator Chad. He deserves it. Save the future. You guys kill that kid." That's what I want. But she's just run ragged, Chad. And eventually she goes back, and her her waitress friend she goes, "Sarah, you, you won't believe what you, you you won't believe this. You gotta see it." She goes, "What what do you want, Darlene? I'm gonna call her Darlene, Chad." I call her Darlene. And she's like, come over here. And they, they sit her down, chat. And they're watching the good old boob tube. And it's the news. And they're saying how, yes, Sarah Connor, mother of four, uh, uh, 35 years old, she was gunned down in her home today. Shot four times. Face blown the fuck away. We just don't understand it. Police are investigating. She says, you're, and then Darlene is like, you're dead, honey. It's like, why are you, breathing? Why are you doing that? What's a, what's a shitty thing to do to her? It's like, she's already been, she's already frenzy, chat. She's had a very stressful day at work, and she doesn't need this shit at all. And then we cut chats later at night. Sarah Connor gets off. She goes uh, back home. But then, chat, we cut to this mysterious Michael Bean. And he is he's just sitting down, chat. He's uh, hes turning his shotgun into a sawed-off shotgun, chat. He, he's gotten into a car. And he, he needs to sleep a little bit because he is fucking exhausted, chat. He's tired. And he's parked next to this construction site. This little construction site. And he's kind of drifting off, and he's, he's listening to that. And then we get a flashback, chat, to the time of 2029, what, what his life is like. And he's in the middle of a mission, chat. They're trying, like him and his squad are trying to take out those giant machine colossi that we saw before with the treads. And they're crushing the human bones and skull beneath them, chat, as if they were nothing. And they're trying to set up a little trap with this colossal machine. And, you know, they're, they're throwing things back and forth. They're fighting off the explosive with the machine. He sees that foremost target identified, blows the shit out of this one woman, chat. She just pops. It's like a hot water balloon filled with organs, chat. Just boom! And she's like, oh, no! And he's running around. Really cool scene. Eventually, like, they, they take out one of the giant colossal machines, Chad. They do do that. But eventually, they got one of those, like, a hovercraft um, copter uh, machines. It's coming right after them, too. And so him and his buddy, Chad, they jump into a car. It's like a convertible that he convert into, like, a, a gun turret. I got a gun turret mounted on. He's driving. His buddy's shooting. He's like, ah, they're shooting at this thing. And this thing is not made for combat, Chad, because it's fucking bouncing everywhere. The, the, the way this car is bouncing, they would all be dead. They would all be dead <laughs> if they were doing that. But he got this fucking uh, uh, machine check. It's a good old shot of him. Fucking flips the car over. And his guy, his, his buddy's just, he's gone. He's gone. And then Congress is like, no. Uh, he's trying to get out, chat. And the whole car bursts into flames. And he feels the hot fire chat of 2029. He goes, oh, and he wakes up. But it's okay. He's not in 2029, chat. He's in 1984. He was dreaming. But, oh, what a traumatic experience. He listens to that, chat. It's the PTSD kicking in. Meanwhile, we cut back to uh, uh, Sarah Connor. Got back to good old uh, Sarah Connor chat. And uh, she is uh, getting ready for a night out of the town as a single lady chat. Her date didn't work out. She got, she was hoping for good old Scott chat. Good old Scott was going to call her and he did. But he says, Sarah, it's just not working out between the two. of She's all, I'm going to be alone forever. It's like, what are you talking about? You're beautiful. That nah, doesn't matter. Anyway. And her, her friend, they're going to be doing stuff. Her boyfriend's coming over, chat. They're going to have the sexy times. They're going to make sandwiches, chat. They're going to have uh, celery and peanut butter, which I never liked that. You see, like this, her fucking roommate, chat, just, just taking globs of peanut butter and, and lathering them, lathering of, uh, on them on celery. I don't like that, chat. Mm -mm, no, thank you. I like my PB&J just fine. Thank you very much. And she's waiting for, like, hopefully another phone call. Uh, but, ah. She gets a phone call. Maybe it's Scott calling him. Maybe he, he says it's going to be okay. She picks it up. And all of a sudden, we, we just hear this guy going, I take, I slowly unbutton your blouse. 
and I take your bra and panties off with my teeth. And she's like, oh, yeah? He's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's what I do. She's like, what do you do next? And he's like, uh, and he's like, she constantly says, what do you do next? She's like, uh, I, I, I don't know what to do. What? Wait, who is this? And <laughs> she's like, it's fucking Sarah. She's like, ah, oh, God damn it. Can you, put, can you put my girl on the phone? And he's like, ah, ha, ha. She's like, she fucked up in the chat. That's kind of shitty. He's like, your, your fucking dumb idiot boyfriend is calling, and she gives the phone to her. It's like, ah, oh, she has a, they're, on, they're all in good, they all have a good relationship, though, chat. They're, they're good to each other. It was, it was a good little in-joke. She doesn't call him dumb, doesn't call him an idiot. And she's like, and her, her roommate asks her, you sure you don't want to just, you know, be here with us, watch a movie or something? She goes, or watch some TV. She's like, nah, nah, you two have fun. I'm just going to go out and see a movie myself. She's like, okay, honey, we'll co please call later, because you're going to be out. Well, we worry about you. And she's like, I'll call. And then she leaves, chat. She goes out there. Ooh. Mmm. Hold on, chat. Sky doesn't know. Sky doesn't know. He does not. James Curley does not. Apologies, chat. I was just looking at something. You know, something that popped up. But after that, chat, uh, we cut to the... Uh, oh, no. Not yet. Uh, another news report comes on, and apparently, chat, another Sarah Connor has been murdered, chat, has been murdered in her apartment, and I was like, what the hell is this crazy nonsense, what's going on, they don't, no one understands it, and eventually, chat, we cut to the police precinct, we're introduced to Lance Hendrickson, chat, he is on the case, along with his police chief, Paul Winfield, Paul Winfield, chat, uh, he's, he's, he's worked, he's worked to fucking death. He's really stressed out, chat. And the last thing he needs is Lance Hendrickson dropping another big case on his desk. But he's gotta, and he's like, listen, I had this horrible murder of this woman in the suburbs, another uh, murder in downtown LA. And Paul Winfield's like, why are you bring me these two cases? The two murders. He's like, here's the fucking thing, Paul Winfield. There's a connection. He's like, there's no connection. There is. They're both named Sarah Connor. And they're like, holy shit, that's crazy. And, but, and, Lance Henderson, he has a prediction. He's like, I think this guy is basically going down the phone book and uh, killing them that way because he killed fucking Sarah Connor A, killed Sarah Connor B, and we got Sarah Connor C next. He's going, we're going to have to contact Sarah Connor C. This doesn't sound good at all. Uh, go ahead and call him, Chad. Go to Lance Hendrickson, Chad. He's calling him. He's calling him. Uh, but they go straight to answering machine. You know why it's going straight to answering machine? Because Sarah Connor's roommate and good old Scotty Chad, they're fucking, they're boning. They're having this sweet, sweaty sex. It's very intimate. And they're not here now. They're not stopping for anything, okay? Except for sandwiches and for celery lathered in peanut butter, Chad. That's all, that's all they want. Meanwhile, we cut to uh, good old uh, Sarah Connor chat. She's in a bar somewhere drinking, and she she's on the news report that another Sarah Connor has died. And, you know, the news are saying, it's like, yeah, the only thing that's connecting these people is the fact that uh, they were named Sarah Connor. And Sarah Connor, she's justifiably freaked out. She's like, oh, shit, this isn't good. What? Don't you know the five biddies? Thank you. Sex makes you hungry, can't we? No, it does. Makes you hungry, makes you thirsty, chat. You gotta re replenish the electrolytes, I think. And so... Uh, she's just fucking freaked out. She goes to the uh, phone and she's like, "Okay, I got, I gotta call somebody. I gotta call, I gotta call uh, my roommate and Scotty." And she calls up chat, but they're still busy fucking Scotty. Good for Scotty, chat. Good for he goes a long time. It goes on for a very long time. Uh, Sarah's roommate's a very lucky woman. But eventually they stop having the sexy time chat. She goes to the kitchen. And as I said, she makes a giant sandwich for both of them. Or maybe she makes like multiple. No, she does multiple sandwiches. And she lathers some celery and peanut butter. Disgusting. I don't like that. Separate, please, chat. Separate. Um, meanwhile, the fucking Terminator. I'm the Terminator. He busts on in, chat. Good old Arnold Schwarzenegger. He busts on in. And he just starts pummeling the shit out of Scotty, chat. Scotty's like, no, come on, man, we can do this. Like, Scotty puts up a good fight, chat. But he does, he's no match for good old Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's throwing him around the room, crashing him through glass, throwing him through furniture, until as uh, Sarah's roommate is walking down the hallway back to the room for sandwiches, celery lathered and peanut butter and more sexy time, fucking Scotty is thrown right through the goddamn door. And he's, her body's just mangled, chat. And he's just, like, oh, he's drooling. He's like, ah, she's like, ah! And Arnold, he busts through the goddamn door, and he pulls out his gun, and he just starts shooting at this poor woman who has no idea what's happening. No idea at all. And she gets blasted, Chad. She gets blasted. She falls down. She's dead. 
And Arnold Schwarzenegger's like, mission accomplished. I killed all the Sarah Connors in the Los Angeles area. My job is done. Time to go back to the future. But chat, the fucking phone rings. Answer machine comes on, and it's Sarah Connor. She says, hi, roommate. It's Sarah. Listen, I'm kind of scared. Can you and Scotty come pick me up? I'm at this very specific address. And Arnold's like, got to go kill her. And he goes out, and he marches out to kill her. Meanwhile, Sarah, she's walking around, and she's just she just feels so uncomfortable, chat. And she notices, she notices Kyle Reese. She's no, we don't know it's Kyle Reese, but she's almost Michael Bean. He's following her. And she's like, I, I just, no, I can't, I can't tell this. I'm going to go into a bar. I'm going to call the police now since I can't, I can't contact my roommate and her, and her, uh, uh, her boyfriend, Scotty. And she goes in there, chat, and she phones the popo. And they tell her, listen, uh, stay in a public place. You know, don't talk to anyone. Don't look at anyone. Just stay there. We're going to send uh, a, 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 a fucking fleet of squad cars to pick you up right now. This is fucking good old Paul Winfield chat telling her all this. Just stay there. We're coming. We're like five minutes out. And she's like, okay, Jesus. And then we get like a really cool, I love this, because it's it's, the, it's a fucking 1980 synth club chat. You got this synth music just fucking pounding through those speakers. You have everyone's just hot, like the AC's out. Everyone's sweating. It's just incredible. And you see, like, Michael Bean across the way just looking at Sarah Connor, and she makes eye contact with him. And who walks into the goddamn club chat? Arnold Schwarzenegger, chat, the Terminator himself. And he is just systematically looking at every face that he possibly can. And, you know, right when he's about to look at Sarah Connor, she turns away to pick something up. He's like, he misses her, chat. He misses her. He misses her. Uh, but, ah, it's all for naught. Because eventually, Arnold, he turns around, and he just, I love this too, it's like the part of the goddamn Red Sea, it's biblical, Chad, it's biblical in nature, he just starts bowling through all these people, just a divide, and he walks right there, and the, and the synth music is just coming in, Chad, and he pulls out his gun, she, she just throws, she's a deer in the goddamn headlights, and all of a sudden, fucking Kyle Reese grabs his sawed-off shot, he's like, get down, and he just starts laying into Arnold Schwarzenegger, Chad, just fucking bullet slug after slug after slug, Arnold, he just falls down. We have not seen the Terminator attack this way, is he dead, Chad? He is not dead, because... Yeah, as everyone's running, he fucking gets up. He just fucking gets up, and he's like, ow! And he starts firing at Carl Reese. Carl Reese, he dies behind a bar. All these explosions, bottles of liquor are just falling on top of him. But he the last, he has, doesn't give a shit about Michael Bean, Chad. He wants that Selecano. And he he sees her running, and um, he doesn't care who he shoots, by the way. He shoots fucking all these innocent people, Chad. Clear the way so I can easily shoot Sarah Connor. She kills this woman, Chad, using an, uh, an Uzi semi-automatic weapon. Uh, but Akari, he comes in there again, and he starts blasting Arnold with some more shotgun shells, chat. And he's down for a little bit. He's got, he went through, like, a glass window or something. A glass door. He's kind of stuck. And then we get the iconic line. Well, Kyle Reese presents his hand, looks down at Sarah Connor. Come with me if you want to live. And she's like, I do want to live. <laughs> and he takes her, chat. And they start moving and grooving. And they get outside. And they hop into a car, and she's like, she's just kind of, she's just freaked out. She doesn't know what to do. She's like, get in the goddamn car! Get in the car right now! And she gets in the car, she's like, what is happening? And Kyle Reese, she just begins to explain, you're, you're going, you're, you're, uh, you're targeted for termination. She's like, termination? Who is this guy? He's like, he's not a guy. He's a machine. She's like, he's like a robot? No, no. He's a cyborg. It's fucking Cyberdyne Engineering, developed by Skynet. He has a, a, a he has flesh, hair. Uh, eyes, like, like we do, but underneath a advanced steel exoskeleton, incredibly dense, incredibly de deadly, very, very, if not impossible to kill. She's like, you can't kill these goddamn weapons? Nope, I certainly cannot, as you can obviously see. And Arnold, he's just fucking coming after them, chat. He's fucking coming after them as fast as, fast as he's goddamn, he's in his own car, and they're smashing into each other and shit, and eventually... Uh, they get to an alleyway. They get to an alleyway. Arnold, he fucking crashes his car. Big ol' hawking explosion. Everything's exploding. But that's not going to start Arnold, chat. Because he fucking jumps out of those goddamn flames. Uh, eyebrows been singed off. Really like this aesthetic they went with, chat. His eyebrows are gone. And his hair is, like, even more, like, weird looking. And I, I like that. Because it makes him look, uh, 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 less human. Less human. And he jumps on this goddamn car, chat, and he puts his entire fucking fist through this thing. Puts it right through. He's, he's just trying to grab on the Sarah Connor. Like, I'm going to get you, bitch. And Carl is like, he's driving, like, he's going backwards at the same time, trying to protect her, trying to get his shotgun out to shoot the Terminator. Chat. I mean, it's just pure fucking chaos. Eventually, he does, he does get out, chat, and he does like a really sharp turn. And Arnold, he goes fucking flying. He hits the side of a goddamn building. 
Meanwhile, a cop pulls up. He's like, what the hell? And Colin Reese, he gets out of there, and he, they start, him and Sarah Connor start driving. Cops say all this shit. Terminator fucking gets up. He walks over the cop, smashes his head into the car multiple times, Shay, until it just fucking pops. And then he gets in the car himself, and he still is going after Chet, still going after them. He cannot be stopped. As Colin Reese says, he cannot be reasoned with. It's crazy. And so Sarah, she starts asking, like, who are you? He says, my name is Kyle Reese. And he just begins the, the exposition chat. As I typically say, it's the word vomit. However, it really works here because of how they, the performances, they sell this exposition heavy dialogue. Because Sarah's confused, we're confused, but we do, we do know that the, the, the future is a thing. This guy is from, is from the future, came back, and he's trying to tell Sarah, like, all these things that are trying to, have, like, he's trying to condense as much as possible. And she just thinks that he's fucking insane. And she's constantly trying to escape. She's slapping the shit out of him. Chad, it's great. Eventually, they pull into a parking garage. They got to change cars. He grabs, like, don't run off on me. And eventually, they go to, they find another car. He's, he's working on it. And he just, he basically just sets her down. He's like, listen, this is what this is. This is what's happening right now. I'm the only one, could, I'm the only one that can protect you. And eventually, just either because of sheer trauma, chat, PTSD, or Stockholm Syndrome that's, set, that's setting in, she just says, fuck it. I mean, okay. I mean, that thing got up after you shotgun blasted him. He was on fire, and he's still coming after us. And she just eventually believes him. Oh. Vern and Chris talk about mashing a guy's head and makes me hungry. <laughs> good old mash head. That sounds good to me. Oh, man. Good shit. Uh, and so she's like, okay, okay, I believe you. And then and all, by, while they're all, while he's working, he's saying all this while he's working on the car chat, which is really cool. I like when they have actors, like, doing a specific action, like, that's very intimate, kind of uh, involved. Uh, um like a detail but also giving some like dialogue but also being very panicked it's great like michael bean doesn't get enough credit for this performance yet he is very very good in this movie tech noir very much a tech noir film yes exactly shooter shoot tech noir horror i like it so he's working on this chat and the police cars are always they're scanning the parking garage looking for them and they duck uh they duck just behind it uh but chat the another police car also goes in there to the to to double check, but it's fucking, uh, that's the thing too, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, he calls in the other cops to find them for him, because he can also mimic people's voices, Chad, he's mimicking the off officer's voice, whose head he just fucking smushed into the concrete, uh, and so he's in there, and fucking Carl Reese is like, ah shit, because he activates the car, and he makes a noise, and Terminator's like, foremost target identified, and he takes out his big old shotgun, Chad, and he starts blasting, and Kyle Reese and Sarah, they're like, we gotta get the fuck out of here. They get the car going, Chad, they hit the ignition, they start, they start putting me fucking pedal to the metal, baby. And they bust out of it, but the Terminator is still coming after them. And eventually, they're like in this tunnel, and Kyle's like, take the wheel, Jesus! Not Jesus, Chad, actually Sarah Khan. Take the wheel, Sarah! Take the wheel! Actually, also, he, I think he mentions, too, he mentions Sarah Connor, by the way, uh, you have a son. <laughs> you give birth to a son who is the savior of the future, who leads humanity against the machines. We got to get you prego. We got to get you prego. By the way, you got to get you prego. <laughs> and we got to make sure you live. Okay, these, these are the things. These are what's, what needs to happen. A lot of details, chat. A lot of exposition being thrown at us. But now they're in the middle of this tunnel, chat. He takes out his shotgun, and he just starts laying into Arnold's uh, police cruiser chat. Arnold, he eventually loses control of the wheel, gets shot in the fucking face. He's like, ah! And then he's, like, trying to stop it. Ah, it's too late. Hits a goddamn wall, chat. Boom! He hits a wall. Kyle Reese's car is also pretty fucked up. And they're not going anywhere, chat. They're stuck. He's trying to, uh, to get the ignition to go and nothing. And you see this entire squad of police cruisers coming at him. And he's like, fuck it, I'll go down and fight. He grabs a shotgun. He's about to go out there just start shooting these guys. But Sarah's like, don't do it, Kyle. Don't do it. And he, he stops, chat. He doesn't do it. He doesn't do that. And, uh, and he's like, just the police officer's like, get step out of your vehicle. And he steps out, chat. And they arrest him. They get Sarah. And then they uh, they check on uh, the Terminator chat. What happened to him? He's gone. He has vanished. They're like that's not good. <laughs> he can get up no matter what chat. He's tough. Uh, and eventually they take uh, Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor to the police station. Meanwhile, chat, we come back to uh, to the Terminator, uh, and uh, he's like, I gotta make some repairs on myself. He gets in. I guess he got, he rented out an apartment chat. I believe he rented out an apartment somewhere. And we get like a, a, a really cool scene here where we actually get to see more of the machine parts. Because his face is all fucked up. And he goes to the sink. He sees like the, you see like kind of like a metallic, like slightly and everything. Like right around the eye. Not, not much, but like right around the eye. And he's like, this eye is useless now. And he proceeds to take all these tools, chat. And like he starts like repairing his arm and things. 
He also states, uh, starts like taking his eye out. It's like, oh my god. And you see some of the Stan Winston effects. It's not a perfect uh, a representation of Arnold Schwarzenegger, but it's close. It's at least very close, Jeff. But he starts removing all this shit, Jeff. All this blood starts pouring out. All this, all these, all those gory effects. And eventually he cleans it out. And then you see it, Jeff. This electronic eye, this this beady electronic red eye staring at you. And then we get the iconic look, chat. He puts these glasses on the black, the, the giant black sunglasses, chat. Puts on his like, this is going to be iconic for the next 40 plus years. And then, chat, he, he forgets his shitty uh, denim chain jacket. He puts on that hot black leather jacket. Got them good old uh, uh, jeans on, too. He's like, I got to get to killing. And he goes on out, chat. Meanwhile, we cut to the, the police precinct, chat, where we have um, Lance Hendrickson. We have uh, Paul Winfield to trying to calm Sarah down, explain, like, listen, we, we got him. We're going to look for the other guy. You're, you're, you're safe here. She's like, I, I just I don't know if I'm safe. I don't know. He's like, it's okay. We brought in, we brought an expert. We brought in a psychologist. He's going to talk to you. Gonna, uh, you're going uh, gonna, to gonna answer some of his questions. He's going to ask you a few questions. He's going to go talk to Kyle. And she's like, are you going to talk to him about all this future nonsense shit? She's like, uh, yep, I, that's, what I, that's what I'm here for. And she explains all their stuff. And eventually... Uh, she's watching a video chat of the conversation between um, the psychiatrist and Kyle Reese. And he goes over everything. They're asking him, like, where are you from? And he's like, I'm from the future, man. I served under John Connor of Platoon uh, 2, whatever the fuck it is. Chat, like, all this information. And he's saying, like, listen, I've come back because we're all going to die. The, the machines are going to rise. I know what I'm saying is crazy, but it's true. You need to let me see Sarah. I have to see Sarah. And he starts freaking out. He starts, ah, he starts like throwing people around the room. It's like, get a hold of him, get a hold of him. He's like, you fuckers don't know what's coming for you. And it's crazy. And the, 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 the psychiatrist is like, I'm going to make a fucking mint off of this guy. He's just happy, Jay. like, look how much money, look how crazy this fucker is. How much money I'm going to make off, uh, uh, off of him. Oh, my God. The videos. <laughs> the lectures. The money. She's each side. But what about Sarah? She's like, oh, yeah, listen. Uh, you just, we're, you're going to file a very lengthy report, uh, but you need some sleep. So good old, good old Paul Winfield, Chad. Good guy, Paul Winfield. He brings her into his office. She's like, hey, go ahead, sleep on the couch. Hey, listen, I know it doesn't look comfortable, that, but it is the most comfortable uh, couch in this entire place. And gives her her jacket. He's like, Dude, don't worry, you're going to be fine. Just rest, get some sleep. We're going to deal a lot uh, more of this in the morning, okay? And him and Lance Hendrickson are like, this is, this is a crazy fucked up situation. And the, and the psychiatrist is like, all right, guys, well, I'll be back tomorrow morning. But I got to go get some sleep. They're like, okay, yep, see you tomorrow. And he walks out, Chad. He's just saying, hey, says goodbye to the attendant at the front desk. And Chad, he passes by the Terminator. Arnold Schwarzenegger's at the police precinct. And he walks up uh, to the attendant. And he's like, ask him, I'm here to see Sarah Connor. And he says, well, right now she's making a statement, so it's probably going to be a few hours. And he's like, I need to see her now. And he's like, listen, man, uh, you can wait here, and eventually she will come out, but I, we have some policies, so we can't let you see her at the moment. And he goes, and we get the iconic line. He look, He's like, I love this chat. It's so subtle. It's such a great scene. He's like, he looks at the guy, and he looks off to the side. And that's the thing, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger, people say Arnold Schwarzenegger is a bad actor, and he's not a bad actor. He, he has limited range. He has a very limited range. But, and I think that limited range helps him with this, though. Because he is the perfect actor to play a robot. He really is. He, like, his, his movements are perfect. Like, the way he looks around. And it's so just uh, tight and uh, um, controlled. You're like, oh, I can totally buy him as a robot. He sells it. And the way he talks, too, that, that Austrian accent helps, too. And he's looking around. Che, he, looks, he looks at all the corners of the, uh, of the, of the, of the front of the... Um, of the desk of the desk area of the attendant's workspace and he just leans into the guy and says i'll be back and he fucking leaves Shay. he's like all right well you go see you later and then we just we just stay with the with the uh the attendant right now he's filling out reports and shit and then his, his whole office space is illuminated as the fuck as this fucking car that Arnold Schwarzenegger is driving busts into the front of the police pursuit this guy goes oh and it comes around and just fucking smushes him i mean it, it, the speed this thing was going his entire desks that is just pressed against his body chat so he probably just vomited up all of his intestines and bones just bleh, everything came out of him it was all oh, incredibly graphic and Arnold he fucking gets out of the car chat and he has his fucking uh uh 12 gay spaz, spaz 12 shotgun and uh m4 and he just starts blasting i love this scene it's so scary 
Because no one knows. These guys have no idea what the fuck is happening. And even like Paul Winslow, he says, we got 30 officers in here. You're going to be safe. And he just starts blasting all these guys, chat. No one stands a chance. Uh, also, this is when we see like all the kind of like the robotic features. We did see that earlier when you, when uh, the Terminator was chasing after both Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor earlier. But we also see we see even more in how he's like how we see how he sees. And it's like an all in red. He has all these graphs and, and spreadsheets open like how to kill people effectively. It's it's really cool. Thank you, Junction of the Five Minis. Going all Kool Aid Man on him. Oh yeah, <laughs> exactly. The R rated version of it. And man, I feel really bad for some of these characters. He's killing all these people. Uh, you get Paul Winfield, like Paul Winfield, he goes in the Sarah Connor's uh, room, he says, okay, listen, stay right here, stay under my desk, you just don't, don't move, okay, and he, he's putting on a Kevlar vest, chat. he's got an M6, Lance Hendrickson's right there too, he's got a gun, uh, and then Paul Winfield, chat, and like, well, Arnold, he's, he's, like, Arnold's getting shot and shit, but, like, nothing, he's, like, kind of like, oh, and he continues to blow people away, shoot people in the face, eventually, it's pretty cool, he goes to the electrical system, the uh, uh the breakers the breakers and he sees that and just rips it out and then it's all in darkness chat except red and so it's like he's highlighted by this w weird red emergency light but everything else is in darkness it is so cool and the way he's just walking and it's just so uh the, the robotic and the motions i love it and eventually chat paul winfield he pops up he's like hey motherfucker and he starts shooting he's like oh he thought he killed him but chat fucking all sorts he just turns around just blast good old paul winfield's like no paul winfield and paul winfield he's just on the ground just, <coughs> he's just dying chat choking on his own blood and then fucking lance Hendrickson says no paul winfield ah and he starts shooting chat and Arnold, he's like, I don't think you heard me the last time. And he uses his shotgun and M6 on Lance Hendrickson. Chat blows him away. Probably shred his entire upper body. So he's dead. Um, eventually cut to and Kyle Reese's. Uh, he's in the interrogation room still. He's knocked out the guy who was, uh, you know, protecting him or making sure he wasn't going crazy. He gets out of their chat. But then we cut to Sarah Connor. She's just like, it's quiet. And you hear like some moans and maybe some distant screams of some police officers. But you just hear the crunch of feet on glass and wood and blood, chat. That's all you hear. And Sarah, she's hearing this. And you see a shadow come across the door. And it's trying to open it. You hear the shake. She's like, oh, she's so scared. Eventually, the, a fucking fist is burst through the glass. Reaches for the handle. But it's okay, chat. It's not the Terminator. It's Kyle Reese. And she's like, oh, thank God, Kyle. I love you. And they got out of there, chat. They start smooching now. They don't start smooching yet, chat, but they might as well. And so he grabs it. We got to get the hell out of here. And they run out, chat. Fucking Terminator's like, God, God damn it. And he comes after them, chat. He starts shooting them and shit. But uh, Sarah and Kyle Reese, they jump into uh, a car, chat, an unmarked, an unmarked police car, and they drive off. And it's like, God damn it. All right, well, back to square one. Time to start murdering some other people. And eventually, chat, we, uh, we're following uh, Michael Bean, uh, good old Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor. They, they run out of gas. It's just on empty. And eventually they park They, they in some, it feels like a very rural area. They get out, they ditch the car, and they go into like this, uh, they go underneath a bridge. And, you know, it's, they're, just, they're just taking a breather at this point. Sarah's complaining about being so cold, and Michael Bean's like, I'll oh, come over there and warm me. He comes up and warms her, chat, kind of hugging her like this. And, uh, and she says, fuck, I mean, this, this shit's crazy. He goes, yeah, it really is. It's it's it's, it's not great. And she notices so they're getting a little intimate chat. There's like a, there's a connection between them. Survival and traumatic stress will do that to you. You will establish a connection with someone who's going to do the exact same thing very easily in this movie chat. And she's like, oh my god, you've been injured. She's like, it's okay, it's just a little flesh wound. She's like, you're bleeding profusely. Thankfully, there was a med kit in the car that they were driving. Chat. So they grab the med kit. She starts uh, applying the bandages and things, and she starts asking them, uh, uh, tell me about my son. And he goes, John Connor is like the best guy in the world. He saved my life. I grew up, I was born in a concentration camp. I never knew my parents. Uh, all we did all day, like the machines, for whatever reason, they forced us to just move dead bodies for processing. It's like fucked up the details he's going into, chat. Tell me, Smug, welcome to stream. Hope you're doing very well. We're in the concentration camp section of the movie. And he's going, and the thing is, you would think like, oh, it would be so cool to say uh, to see this. It'd be horrific, but it'd be cool. But Michael Bean, again, he he deserves more credit for this movie, Chet. Uh, he does such a great job of delivering this kind of exposition-heavy dialogue, but always making it interesting through his his very passionate performance. He does a fantastic job in this film. John Connor was the bestest ever. He was. I loved him. 
And he said, and like I thought my life was going to be this this way forever until I I met him when I was 12 years old. He 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 liberated us and he taught us to fought the fight back against the machines. Okay, in the year 2029. Your son is the hero of humanity, Sarah. And she goes, jeez, this is a, this, it's a lot for her to take in. A lot for her to take in. And she finishes off and he goes, that was a pretty good field dress. She goes, this is my first one. <laughs> he goes, congratulations. Hey, I appreciate it. And then she nuzzles into his body check because she's still so cold. So cold. And she's sleepy. She's like, we should probably get some sleep. She goes, I can't sleep. Tell me more about, tell me about more where, where you're from. And it's like, after the concentration camp story, do you really want to know more about where he's from? But it's like, okay. He's like, all right, I'll share the details. Tony L, thank you for the host. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing very well today. Yeah, good to see you. Oh, Glee, I need to give you that hero. <laughs> oh, he gives it to her, chat. He's a one-shot wonder, apparently. Uh, I mean, damn, he is fertile as fuck. Uh, same with her. And so he do we, we he talks t talking about a world. So this is where we do get the flashback. He's just finished a, a mission. Some of his guys have died. Some of his uh, a squad. Also, uh, Sarah I think asks. Oh no, that comes later in the movie. Never mind. He got, she asks about the women of of his world. But we'll go into that a bit in, in of the future. And so he starts talking about he just got back from a mission chat. We go we go into the barracks or the what what what, what is the home or one of the secret bases that humanity is currently occupying. And they have, like, these dogs, these German shepherds. He explains to her that uh, the, the machines initially, they had this, this kind of really fake rubbery skin uh, shell. Uh, easy, very easy to detect them. You could see from a fucking distance. But then they started actually growing this, the, these flesh suits for them that were real. And actually, they, I mean, their hair grows, their fingernail grows. They age. It's like, okay, so they actually do establish that. Like, people always say, like, why is Arnold Schwarzenegger looking so old in the Terminator movies? They actually do establish that. The Terminators are just not robots. I was like, I'm glad they did this. They're just not robots. The actual uh, um, uh, uh, flesh on the outside is actual flesh. It will age naturally. So I think that was, that was pretty good. They always establish that in the future. And maybe that was some good franchise planning for James Cameron. He's like, if I'm ever going to go back to this and my actor's age or my Terminator age, if, because if he wants to do Arnold Schwarzenegger, it'll be a, a, at least a reasonable explanation. So I was like, that's kind of cool. Crispy Computer Fish, welcome to the stream. Good to see you. Wicked Chick, how you doing? Hope you're doing very well. Look at all the people in here, chat. Just in my Terminator review. Good to see you guys. Uh, but he's, he's just like, Oof. yeah, but they use dogs to detect because they can't tell who's a Terminator and who's not now. And so they use dogs because they're able to detect. And we saw early in the, uh, in the film, chat visual cues, very important early in the film, that dogs know what a Terminator is. Well, at least they, they're like, okay, that thing is fucking fucked up. That's not a human. So they can identify when someone is fucked up and a Terminator. And so he's, he goes in this barrack chat and it looks like shit. I mean, these people are just miserable. You see these kids, like they're all, like you see these, these, this one little girl and boy watching TV. It's just the, 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 the chases of a TV chat with a flame, like a fire going inside. They're just staring at this thing. The, all the old people are dying chat. I mean, they're rotting away. Uh, you have rat catchers. Like you have these kids that are looking for rats because that's what they eat for their food chat. That's, that's the most meat they're going to get is fucking rat burgers. That's what they're rocking right now chat. And he's just sitting there and just going, my God, my life sucks. But he has one thing chat. One thing that is keeping him going. He takes out of his, his pocket. And it's a picture. It's a picture of Sarah Connor, chat. And you know that he fucking jerked it for the, to that picture for a very long time. For many years, chat, he was just jerking it. And listen, when you live in this world, you be doing that, okay? Don't say you wouldn't. It's like, you absolutely would. You absolutely would, chat. And he's looking at this picture lovingly. He's like, oh my God. He has feelings for this woman, chat, from the past he has never even met. Wow. That's crazy. But then, chat, we hear the dog. We see these people coming in uh, uh, through the entrance. And all these dogs start barking. Start barking. It's like, oh, no, oh, no. And then this fucking Terminator chat got a big, giant, laser, phase ton weapon. And it just starts mowing everybody down. Everyone starts getting shot. Old people, young people, babies, children just exploding. He even kills the puppers, shit. He even kills the puppers. And Kyle Reese is seeing all this shit. He's, he's laying low. He's trying to see it. And he sees these poor kids. He sees these poor innocent children. We're watching the, the, the fire TV chat. They're looking at him. And then a goddamn laser blast from the face of Ton. Minigun comes their way. Blows him. He goes, no. And he jerks awake. And he's like, oh, shit, Jesus. She's like, are you okay? I was having a flashback slash nightmare. It wasn't good. We got to get the fuck out of here, by the way. And so they get up there, chat. And they now have to go to, they're trying to find a motel. They need, they need to get some supplies. They go to a motel. 
uh sarah uh, it's funny like kyle reese doesn't know how money works and so he just has money it's like is is this enough and he's like this is wad of sweaty ash covered soot covered cash he's like i hope so and they get a room and he's at room of the kitchen and he goes room of the kitchen they get they get a room in there chat he's like okay you wait here she's like i gotta take a shower he's like don't don't please <laughs> don't tell me that i gotta get some supplies uh, i'll be right back and so he goes out there chat into the great city of life. I don't know where they are. I guess they're still in LA. Maybe on the outskirts of LA. Uh, but eventually, uh, Sarah, she's finished her, her shower. And she, um, she she has to call her mom, Chad. She hasn't called her mom. The police said they were going to call her mom. The police had her, her her book. Oh, and that's the thing. Actually, right, right before that, Chad, we cut back to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Here we go. All right, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he is reading through uh, uh, Sarah Connor's uh, address book and phone book. And he's reading all the names and things. And he sees fucking Sarah Connor's mom. And he's like, I'm going to pay her a visit. And we get this poor custodian, Chad, who's like, hey, uh, uh, fucking room service and shit. Smells like a dead cat in there. And because his flesh is actually rotting now, Chad, it looks like his skin color has changed too. And then we see like the options for Alt Schwarzenegger's Terminator Respawn. It's like everything from leave me alone. Fuck. Fuck you, asshole. And Terminator went, that's the good one. Number three. He says, fuck you, asshole. And he's like, ha, and he just leaves. Eventually, Arnold, he grabs more guns, chat, and he goes out there into the great unknown to start a murder. And eventually, we come back to Sarah Connor. She's like, I just, I gotta tell my mom where I am. I just, oh, I have to. And so she calls up her mom, even though Kyle said specifically, do not call anyone. Don't speak to anyone. She's like, but it's my mom. It's fine. So she rings up her mom, chat, and her mom's like, oh, Sarah, thank God coming. What's going on? Where are you? She says, oh, mom, I can't tell you. It's just like, what do you mean you can't tell me? I'm your mother. Please, just, just please tell me. And she's like, okay, okay, I I'll tell you. And then, chat, we cut to her mother's place, and we see that the door has been busted in, that all this furniture was thrown around. We see her mother's dead, mangled body, and who's sitting in that rocking chair, chat? Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Terminator, sitting in that goddamn chair. And he's fucking sounding like her mother, all concerned and shit, with no emotion on his face, so no emotion, so cool. And... Sarah Connor tells her the address. She goes, thank you, Sarah. See you soon. Click. And she goes, oh, I might not be good. <laughs> I think I made a mistake. <laughs> but then she just has time to uh, uh, consider a chat, to think upon it. Because Kyle Reese, he gets in the, uh, gets back. He's, he's fucking bought old Home Depot. He's got all these supplies, shed. He's got ammonia. He's got bleach. He's got, like, plastic, he's got plastic shit, plastic bottles. And she goes, oh, this will be a fine meal. He says, yes, we're going to make plastic. We're going to make fucking pipe bombs because this, these typical weapons that we have right now won't be enough. But explosives might be able to destroy the Terminator. She goes, well, that's cool. And uh, he uh, shows her how to make uh, IED shit, improvised explosive devices. That's what they're called. They do them all. And eventually they're done doing that. And she's, she's sleeping. He's looking out the window, watching. Uh, but she sees him, Chad. She sees that, oh, that sweaty Michael Bean chest. And she walks over. And she's like, are you doing okay? He's like, yeah, I'm doing fine. Don't, don't, don't worry about me. Ah, but Chad, she wants the sexy time. It's either she wants the sexy time or the Stockholm Syndrome has really kicked in. Because she's like, well, t tell me, like, what, what kept you going in that world? And he's like, did you... What about the women of your world? And he's like, oh, they were great fighters. And she's like, no, I mean, like, the women. What were, the, what were they like? And he says, they were amazing. He's like, oh, did you did you have someone that you loved? And he's like, um, and she's like, oh, you did, didn't you? He's like, no, no, I didn't. I didn't. I had, I had someone, but they weren't, they weren't there. They weren't there. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. She goes, listen, I had this, this picture of this woman that was given to me by John Connor. And he told me to hang on to this thing. Uh, he said it, it was very important that, that I hang on to this thing. Uh, and that picture was of you. And it was seeing you every single day that got me through all this fighting, all this horror, uh, all this just never-ending slaughter of our species. You're the one thing that kept me going, Sarah. And I fell in love with you. And she goes, whoa, <laughs> that's a lot. And he says, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have said that. And she's like, no, 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 no. And, she, and then she walks up to him. She's like, I'm glad you told me. And then she starts, just what a simp. <laughs> All that masturbation. All those nights just jerking the chat. You know that was what he was doing. You know he was doing that, Chad. That's, that picture was sticky as hell. And, um. 
She says, no, 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 no. And then she fucking turns her head chat. She starts kissing his body. And they start smooching. And they get on the bed chat. And one thing, too, is Carl Reese, he's a virgin, too. She doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> he's just like, ah. <laughs> but they film in such a way, chat, where it's like, oh, it's hot and sexy. It's beautiful. And, you, and you're, there's many a clenched fist on the bed, on the bedding. And you're like, ah. It's very sexy. And eventually, chat, they do, they do complete the lovemaking. And they cuddle and they nuzzle and things. But now... Now they gotta get going. Ooh, Darcy with the puppies, thank you. He was saving his 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 last nut for this. Didn't even masturbate for a week. I know, like everything. I mean, he was like, I gotta make this work. And just splooge all of it, chat, all of it. Um, oh, clean, thank you for the 50 bitties. Appreciate that. Sex heals all wounds. It's true. It's very true. Mm -hmm. Carl Reese came in six seconds. Hell yeah, man. Mission accomplished. Mission was accomplished at this point. At least half the mission was accomplished. Uh, as far as we know. And so they're they're all they love each other now they love each other it's all lovey dovey, uh, but then the fucking Terminator shows up just like oh no the Terminator and Arnold he's in there and chat he pushes some guy aside and they're like ah they hear the dog barking and like when they hear the dogs barking chat you know a Terminator's nearby and they get the fuck out they go the back way he busts on and he starts shooting but they're gone he's like god damn it. And eventually, Sarah and, and Kyle, they go to this truck that this one guy was like, I'm going to get on here. But they punch the shit out of him, and they steal his truck, chat. But good old Arnold, he's coming after them, too. He gets hot, he gets back in his car, chat, and he's, he's blasting them. And they're, and they're riding, and Carl, he's like, he's like, Sarah, take over the wheel. And he's fucking, he's shooting at the car and everything, chat. But Arnold, he's firing right back, and Kyle gets clipped, gets shot in the gut. Ooh, a gut wound, chat. That's not good. He goes, ah! Oh! And he falls back in the truck. Witness! Witness me! War Voice! We are War Voice! Nick Diaz, the chat attack! Thank you so much, chat. As I often say, Nick Diaz, one of the backbones of the DT community. Good to see you, my friend. How's your night going? Hope you had an excellent stream. Just in the middle of my Terminator review, Kyle Reese just received the gut shot, and Arnold's coming for him, man. He's coming for that Sarah Connor. He's gonna get her. Mmm. Game Boy, Game Boy, welcome to stream. Hello, good to see you from the chat attack. For those of you who might not know, my name is Mr. Evan Seven. I also go by Chris. I am a co-host on DoubleToasted.com. I also stream myself. I'm a variety streamer. Do uh, spoiler reviews for movies, cartoons. I also get into the video games. Gonna, I'm doing it right now. I'm just, I'm almost done with my Terminator review. And after that chat, I'll be jumping into my, some gameplay of Ghost of Shishima. It's been a very fun night. Kimberly KM, welcome. How dare you have the audacity to be on the same time as Old Toasted? I know. How could I do that? But happy to have you here, Kimberly KM. And so, chat, Kyle, she's got a gut shot. Sarah's like, no, Kyle. And she's like, she's losing her mind. She's like, fuck that. And she takes one of the pipe bombs, chat, and she throws it. She throws it at Arnold's car, and boom, it explodes. But he's still fucking alive. He's, he's a little fucked up now, though. He's like, ah. He's, he's, he's trying to go towards it, but he turns around because he hears, ah, ah. And he gets hit by a goddamn truck, chat. Just Boom, right into him. Also, Sarah Connor, she crashes the, the car. They're all, uh, they're trying to get out to. But this car runs right over Arnold Schwarzenegger, chat. And it's like, you can see, I love this shot too. Because they have cameras underneath the car. And you see the, uh, the the body that they use for it. It looks so cool. And so it's been all mangled and shit. But then his arm reaches up and he kind of like stops himself from being dragged even more. And the guy's like, I think we hit something, Joe Bob. And he's like, go check it out, Jim Bob. And good old Joe Bob, he goes out there, chat, to check it out. And he's like, all right. And he looks and he's like, I didn't see nothing. And then all comes up behind him, chat, shmushes his head against the car. Like, good, good, too good uh, uh, shmushes and gone. And Sarah, she's seeing all this. She's trying to drag Kyle away and everything. Um, uh, uh, eventually... Uh, she, uh, like, the guy goes, uh, to the, uh, to go to old Jim Bob Chase. He's like, are you okay? And Arnold gets in the car chain. His face is just completely mangled. More of the robotic parts are sticking out. His fl flesh is rotting off. And he's like, get out. Then the guy goes, I will. He gets out of the chair. At least, at least Jim Bob, he survived. And now Arnold is just coming at them, Chet, with a giant truck of gasoline aiming right for him. That's all he wants to do. And so now, Kyle Reese and Sarah, they're just fucking on foot running as fast as, as they possibly can. Curry's, he's got a gut shot. He's got a, uh, a gunshot wound to the Tum Tum chat. Sarah, she's, she's, I mean, she's been fucked up too. It's not been a good night for him, chat. But they've actually do split that. Okay, we got to split up. 
We got to split up, and Kyle Reese is going to go behind the truck and try to put one of the, the, the pipe bombs in there. And but Arnold Schwarzenegger doesn't give a shit about Kyle Reese, and so he's he only wants Sarah. But he but fuck Kyle Reese. He managed to put a pipe bomb in the exhaust pipe. He sticks it in there. He's like, I gotta jump in this fucking dumpster. He jumps in the dumpster chat, and as you see the fuse going down, like Arnold is so close to just running down Sarah Connor chat. But the pipe bomb goes ba boom, and it goes off, and the entire gasoline chat goes up with the chat. Sarah's blasted, uh, blasted forward she i mean probably a severe concussion probably some burns but she's okay chat she's okay and the entire truck blows up and she watches he comes out behind the side of this building and she sees arnold the terminator himself fucking uh, jump out of the car but he says overwhelmed by the intense heat and fire chat fucking hellfire baby and he falls out to the ground chat seemingly dead and sarah's like oh my god oh my god it's over and you see like the terminator like moving a little bit i love this animatronic effect it's so good Dark Shade with the Bubbies, thank you for that. That truck explosion was made with uh, miniatures. Whoa, really? That's cool. A real truck would have been too expensive, yeah. And you only would have had one chance. And that makes sense. That makes sense. It's, it's a cool effect. A little dated, but it, it worked for the movie itself. Um, and so, uh, and I love the animatronic they have because, like, moving back and forth, you see more of the flesh being burned away, but it's still moving. It's like, and it looks at, and the last look is like at Sarah Connor, like at, at her direction. It's like cool. And then Carl Reese is like, Sarah, Sarah, and they reunite. They're hugging, chat. They start smooching, and then we, and then they, they only occupy one third of the screen, no chat. And anytime you have two people occupying only one third of the screen or of the shot, there's some gonna be in the fucking other two thirds. And the Terminator rises from his fiery grave chat and now this is probably the weakest effect in the movie it goes back and forth the puppet for the terminator is excellent i love the puppet for the terminator and this thing stands up and it's moving around and it's great you see in all of its glory chat the flesh is all gone it's just now it's a pure steel nightmare and this thing is still coming after them and like you see its feet moving and things like you can tell it's a puppet but it, it works it's it's a practical effect chat it, it it matches the world that we're in but they for like wide shots for far away shots they cut to um uh stop motion and i am just not a stop motion fan i just don't like the look of it in any capacity what other movie it's in it's like yeah this this is just not working for me and they do like there you yours is one show which is kind of egregious where you see Sarah and uh, uh, Kyle, they're go they were going to this uh, this factory chat. I, I guess they, like a machine factory. Ha, <laughs> how appropriate. And they're going in there, and they're in the foreground. The Terminator's in the background, and it's like on this uh, blue screen above the with the stop motion effect. It's like, yeah, I just don't dig it. Eventually, they, they get into the factory chat. They locked it over. The, punish the, the Punisher, the Terminator's still trying to get in there. It's still, you know, busting through the door. Eventually, it does get through there. You know, Kyle's like, Sarah, get out of here. Get out of here. I got. I, she's like, no, I'm not going to leave you. He's like, I got to take, I got to fight. I got to fight this thing. And eventually, Chad, he just grabs a fucking piece of rebar, and he just starts smashing this thing in the face, like, over and over and over again. The Terminator doesn't give a shit about going. He backhands him. He just wants Sarah Connor. But Kyle Reese just goes, fuck you, because he has one last pipe bomb, Chad. He fucking, he lights it, sticks it inside the body of the Terminator, and the Terminator goes, ah, oh, shit, and it just explodes. <laughs> it just explodes. Uh, Sarah's knocked back. Kyle Reese is blown off the, uh, blown down the stairs, Chad. Eventually, Sarah Connor, she comes to, she has a hot piece of molten metal, it just, just pierced her leg, she had stuck in her leg in her upper thigh, she takes that huge, she's like, ah, she takes that out, chat, it looks bad, and she crawls over to Kyle Reese, she she's crawling over to him, she's like, Kyle, we did it, Kyle, we did it, and she turns it over, eyes staring at nothing, just eyes staring at nothing, chat, he's dead succumbed either to his gunshot wound or the the hot molten fucking metal that has pierced his chat, chest or just i mean just i don't know just die chat he's gone kyle reese is no more he's left the mortal coil dark another five days all right can we get some rips and f for respects f for respects for kyle reese in the chat chat underrated character a big fan of kyle reese on here it's a kyle reese supportive stream uh and he's dead and she's like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and she's crying over his dead body chat and the Terminator's is like i'm still not done with you bitch and he starts coming for it chat he's may have lost i may have lost my legs but i still got these hands <laughs> and i gotta smack a bitch and he's coming right for it she's like ah and she's like uh, going back chat crawling through all this other machinery and he's just still fucking coming for her. and she goes under this giant press 
this giant metallic press jet. She's dragging herself forward, and this thing is just inches away from her every single time. And she keeps crawling forward, she, and then eventually she gets out of the steam press, and she lowers this gate uh, on, on him. And the and the, uh, the predator, the terminator, sticks his hand through. He's trying to reach for her. It's like just like it's just slightly like touching the side of her face and shoulder. And eventually she's like reaching around for the buttons to activate the press. And she finds the button chat, and she says, You're Terminator, motherfucker! And she presses the button, and he goes, Ah, shit! And he gets smushed, Chad. He gets, it's the ultimate smush of all time. And it compresses on him, Chad, until he's nothing, until he's flat. And the only thing that is truly left of him, Chad, that's intact, is his soul... Uh, uh, mechanical metal arm, which plays a very important role in the sequel. You should have smushed the rest of that shit. And she's crying and everything. She can't believe it. Eventually, the police and paramedics come chat. They got her in a stretcher. Uh, and she sees right next to her another stretcher, but in a body bag chat. They, they zip that shit up and they take him to the morgue. And eventually, thank you, Feisty Monkey, for the 60 biddies. Very, very kind. Uh, then we cut. It's, it's several months later. I don't know, like six, seven months later, chat. And we see Sarah Connor on the open road. She's in a, she's in a, in a car chat. Driving with a, a, another a German Shepherd, got a good old pupper in there, and she's making these recordings. She's making these recordings, talking to her son John. And we look down, we get a wide shot, and she's prego. She rock a big old pregnant belly chat, and it was that was what it was. Kyle Reese was the father of John Connor, and this is this is interesting uh, chat. So she's telling him like, your dad is the man you have to send back, and he's going to die. That that is fucked up. Like, she's telling her son, you have to send this guy back. Uh, you have, you can't tell him that he's the father. He's not yet, yet your dad. And you have to also manipulate him to fall in love with me. Cause you may, it makes sense. John Connor's the one that gives the picture to Kyle Reese. Cause he knows like, I need to make him fall in love with my mother. That is some, um, I mean, when you think about it, it's like, that is really manipulative and fucked up. I mean, it's necessary. That's the word they're fighting, but it's like, God damn. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle Reese, 2004 to 1984. Oh, that's great. That's great. Queen. <laughs> yeah. Got that furlong all the way, growing that tum tum, shit, growing that tum tum, and eventually she's telling all this shit, and she pulls up to a gas station. She's in Mexico, I believe. I think she's somewhere in Mexico, and she's speaking Spanish to uh, the uh, the gas station attendant, you know, to fill up the the car, uh, and she gets back in the car, chat, because she's tired, because she's prego, and uh, a little little Mexican child, he comes up behind and takes a picture. Wee! He's, he's talking all this shit, presenting the picture towards her, and the guy goes, uh, she's like, well, what's he saying? And he's like, ah. Oh, uh, he says he, uh, he takes pictures of people and he needs to take these pictures because if he doesn't make any money from them, he'll, his dad will beat him when he gets home. And, he, and she goes, that's a good fucking hustle, kid. And he's like, hell yeah, I know. And she's like, how much? And he's like, four pesos or maybe four dollars. I think it was like four dollars or something. She's like, all right, fuck it. Uh, and she gives him the dollar, gives him the money. And it's the picture, it's the picture that Kyle Reese has always, always had. It's like, wow, there it is. That was the origin of it. And she puts that right next to all her other stuff. And the little boy, he starts screaming about, starts hollering about something. And Sarah's like, what's he saying now? And the guest agent attendant said, he says, there's a storm coming. And Sarah, she looks off into the rising chat, puts on her glass. She says, you have no idea. And she dries off Chad into a mad painting. Ba bum bum ba bum ba bum bum ba bum As a storm does come upon her. And that, my friends, that chat is Terminator. The classic 1984 sci-fi adventure action horror film directed by James Cameron. One of my favorite movies of all time. I love this film, chat. I think it's great. A few issues with some of the effects that are slightly dated. But, man, this, this, this film had such an impact on the sci-fi action genre. Uh, I mean, that is still felt to this day. Um, like, from any, any thriller to any sci-fi to any other action film. Uh, I mean, this, this movie... I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger was already doing great films at this point in his career... Uh, I think he, he had done Conan, which was really fun. This is what solidified him as a leading action star, as a blockbuster star, chap. A movie star. This made his goddamn career. Uh, and then he continued, he continued on to make some other great films. Like, after this, I think the year later he did Commando, and then the year after that he did Predator. So he was on a fucking roll. He did, he did a lot of great action films in the 80s, chat. And, of course, did what is considered by many people to be, if not the greatest, uh, if, if not one of the greatest, if, the, if not the greatest, one of the greatest action films of all time, Terminator 2, Judgment Day. An incredible sequel. I still prefer the first one, but I understand why people like it too. Dungeon of the Five Days, thank you. Such a great movie. So fun, chat. Highly recommend checking it out. Seriously, do watch this. But yeah, I have to... 
I have to give this a better than sex shade. It was a blast watch. I usually watch it a couple times a year, and I have a few issues with it, but it is just so much fun, and there's so much I admire about it. I have to give this chat a better than sex.